Manchester United is actually a very good team. We just need to know how to play well as a team. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Football with Priscilla. I'm Priscilla, obviously. So hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want to talk about the Manchester United buying game, which Manchester United lost 4-3. <laughs> And losing seems to be in Manchester United's DNA of late. But before we get into the video for today, make sure you share, like, and subscribe. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe, and turn your notifications on to know when next I post a video. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, I know people expect me to calm or doom and gloom because Manchester United lost to Bayern. But you know what? For some reason, I'm actually quite calm. Maybe it might be the reason that I actually knew we were going to lose. But also, it could be the fact that I don't think we were horrible. Listen, we considered four goals, but managed to get back three. That should give us hope somewhere, right? Like, it's not that bad. But anyway, so I know it looks horrible, okay? Another loss. But when you look deep, way, way deep, 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 deep down, ladies and gentlemen, deep, deep, deep down, there is hope, okay? Now, with regards to today's game, right, I can give 10% of the blame to Eric Ten Hag, who right now, as I think about it, should really get 10% of the blame and not all of the blame. Maybe in some other games he can get like a lot of blame, but for today, I give 10% to Eric Ten Hag. I think he made the right substitution in removing Ericsson today. Finally, he took people's advice and removed Ericsson early. However, I feel like he put Garnacho in a little bit too late as well as Marshall because we saw how they changed the game. Marshall and Garnacho today actually influenced the game. It was good seeing Marshall getting in the groove of things and actually, you know, causing change to the game. But aside from that, so I will not blame Eric Ten Hag so much. I feel like he has 10% of the blame. Now, 90% solely rest on Manchester United players. Listen, that team does not have intensity. I feel like the players don't apply themselves that much. We could see how good Manchester United is when they just apply themselves. But the players, I feel like, are not applying themselves enough. And with and when you read what um, Ole... Ole's interview, right? I was reading about what Ole's comments were about his time at Manchester United on Twitter. And with what he was saying, I was like, hmm, this is so familiar. Now, if we keep on changing coaches and yet the players keep on acting the same way, I think it's time for us to ask, what is the bigger problem? Is it the players or the coach? And for me, with reading Ole Gunnar Social's comments, I've removed the coach from this whole equation. I honestly don't think the problem at Manchester United is the coach. I think the problem is the Glazer family, the owners, right, as well as the players. There is a certain mentality they have where when things are not going their way, they want to press on, they want to give it their all, they down, they down tools. And we've seen that this has caused so many Manchester United managers their job. So for me, I'm like, you know what, after reading Oligana Social's comments, I'm like, okay, I will not be as... as hard on Ten Hag as I have been. Granted, he does deserve it sometimes, but I feel like the players have so much to do. Because against Bayern, there are moments where you'd assume that Manchester United is the one leading. There was no application, there was no intensity, no fighting for the ball, nothing. And yet Bayern, who was leading, who was playing way better football than we were, was actually the team that was more intense, that was fighting for every ball. Manchester United was asleep. Now, with that said, I feel like there was an imbalance in the team. I think we played too much with, uh, too much on the left side. Like the ball was very much on Rashford and Regulon side. Pelestri was a passenger in that game. Dalot was a passenger. Well, Dalot wasn't a passenger because Bayern were attacking us wave after wave. But Pelestri, like he was a passenger in that game because they were not spreading the ball. Like they were just playing off of the left. There was Pelestri on the right, and for heaven, oh my God, no one was giving Pelestri the ball. I don't know if they didn't have confidence in Pelestri. I have no idea. But for some reason, Manchester United decided today that they would just play off of one side. And Bayern got the clue. And they kept on also defending on the left side. They were not changing wings to Pelestri for some reason. I don't know. And the last thing that I noticed is we still have a huge problem. And the biggest problem, I think, for Manchester United is our midfield. Ericsson. I don't mean to 
be on Ericsson every single game. I'm a huge Ericsson fan, but I just don't think he's the same Ericsson we all admired. Like, he's grown older, he's slower. He can't cover the midfield anymore. And that's giving so much pressure on Casemiro because Casemiro as well isn't as young as he was. He's no longer versatile. So he's failing to cover the pitch. And Ericsson is also failing to cover the pitch. And now Bruno is supposed to be the playmaker, the defensive mid, and also the attacking midfielder. Like Bruno wants to do everything, but he can't. Ericsson is not carrying his weight, let's be honest. We saw the difference when McTominay came in and when Ericsson was there. Even though the, dif the, the difference wasn't as significant, but we can now say we need a younger Ericsson, so to speak. This is why I can't wait for Sofia and Amrabat to come, because I feel it will remove weight off of Casemiro. Our midfield needs work. Ericsson, like, Ericsson should just be coming on at 80 minutes and not starting the game. Like, no, no. Ericsson on that midfield is Manchester United's biggest weakness. With that said, it was so good to see Rasman Hoyland finally on the score sheet. I think... I honestly think there's more to come from that kid. Like, he's good. His positional awareness and his positional sense is actually amazing. If Manchester United can play as a team and manage to get balls to Rasmus Hoyland, we can, we can change the season. I honestly believe we can change the season. The way he positions himself, he's always in and around the 18-yard area. I honestly think that kid is good. Like, he's good. The signs he's showing for me are promising. Right? If only we can find the right wingers that can give him the ball. It can change Manchester United's season. If we can find the perfect balance, we can change our season. I honestly believe there are players in there, guys. There are good players in there that are capable of changing and turning our season around. So for me today, listen, we lost 4-3, but we, we, we fought back, okay? We managed to fight back. That just showed me that the players if they apply themselves, can be a great team. But we are just not applying ourselves. So listen, don't lose hope. We can manage to turn this season around. So yeah, if you came here for a rant, ladies and gentlemen, I'm calm today. So that's all I had for you guys today. Thank you so much guys for watching. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. And turn your notifications on to know when next I post a video. Bye.